Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, everyone. And welcome to Eminent 2023. My name is Santi Shimeka, I work at the European Schoolnet. I'm in charge of, you may have heard about e twinning if you're in the education sector. And I've been in uh, European Schoolnet for quite some time. I've been attending quite a few eminents. And uh, it's 9.30, it's raining, and I'm not sure about you, I'm very excited and thrilled and honored and also slightly sleepy. So I wonder if we can actually have a, a little game to see if you can warm up a little. So I wanted to check with you how many people are from policy makers and ministries of education. If you can raise your hands and say something like, yes, that's quite a lot. Wonderful. Not everyone. Let's see. How many people are from the European Schoolnet office? Guys, you here? And I raised my hand as well. Okay. How many people are from Indire? Indire. Okay. Wonderful. European Commission, is it present? It should be present. Thank you. You here? Wonderful. And uh, okay. You all awakened. I said, no, no problem. That's great. I was thinking I'm doing some Tai Chi, but we don't need it, so that's perfect. Okay, so I will be accompanying you through these two days of Eminent, which is not only a conference. Uh, I think many of you have been to Eminence before. How many of you have you been to Eminence before? I mean, some of you, yes, that, actually quite a lot, so you know what we're talking about. So uh, if, you, if you think of it, I've been to Eminence since ever, I must admit. I think the first one was in 19... 99, if I'm not mistaken. It wasn't even called Eminent. And don't remember anything about it. I mean, I've been into Eminence in Rome again, in Genova, in Lisbon. What I don't remember is what we talked about. What we, I do remember is the people. And I remember the bonds, and I remember the networking. I think that's quite important for this kind of conferences because we're putting together different audiences. Industry people, by the way, who is from industry here? Industry, okay. Well, that's actually quite a lot. So we're putting together industry and policy makers and academia researchers, who is from academia, academia researchers, who is daring to say this. Okay, wonderful. So you're daring to say you're from academia. So we're putting together policy makers, the ones who do things. We're putting together the ones who think about things, the people who are implementing things. So, I mean, this is quite a special event, I would say, Eminent. So, um, the conference is, or well, event, is, is interesting because it's dealing with a very important topic. As we all know, it's not only because of the year of skills, because we're talking about empowering schools with digital skills. That's is quite a challenging, motivating, and maybe we should think about more than empowering. Sometimes it's like aligning schools with the society. Are schools ready for digital skills? Are schools ready for this, what is going on outside the schools? Sometimes I have the feeling schools are kind of in a, in a protected area. And I was talking to a colleague the other day about how teachers are thinking about digital skills. Yeah, no, you shouldn't bring computers. You shouldn't bring your, your mobile telephone because it's, it's dangerous. Taking a picture? No, because, you know, what happens with the pictures? I mean, it's, there's a bit of... You know, we should demystify digital skills. I think it's important now to understand the benefits and the power those digital skills have. So I don't go into say much more because we do have uh, a few things happening. The agenda is quite dense. Now you have a badge, and as much as I have a badge, if I haven't lost it, no, I see actually. So uh, there is a slight change in the program times. So don't look at the times here, just look at the QR code. And if you want to see the updated program, the most updated program, just go there and you will get exactly the right program. Okay, but still, as you can see, uh, it's going to be quite a dense agenda today. Likely we are going to have everything organized in terms of weather. So weather is bad now, but as soon as we finish, around 4.30, it's going to be sunny. So it's also sorted, we talked with, with the Vatican, so it's fine. So uh, let's get some introductions now, some welcome messages, and let's start from the host. I mean, Eminent is European Schoolnet's key event of the year. I mean, we launched it, European Schoolnet with, the, with Eminent, and I think we've been doing this every year since. So I would like to call on stage 
my boss and the director of European Schoolnet, Mr. Mark Durando. Page is yours. Your uh, w welcome words. So, dear President of Indire, dear Ministries of Education, dear FCL Future Classroom Lab Industry Partners, dear participants, dear Commission colleague, dear Diplomatic Advisor Ambassador representing Minister Valdi Valditara, many thanks uh, uh, to, to be with us today. Um, welcome to this 23rd edition of our eminent conference this year in Rome again. First of all, I, I would like to thank our Italian partner, Indire, for hosting this event in this marvelous location. Our gratitude goes to Cristina Grieco, the president of Indire, and also Elisabetta Bugini and her team for co-organizing this event with European Schoolnet. Before starting with you the main highlights sharing with you the main highlights of our next two days together, I would like to pause to allow us to reflect in particular on the loss of an extremely prestigious figure in the education sector, not just in Italy, but also in Europe, Luigi Berlinguer, a remarkable figure in Italian politics and a beacon of Italy's education sector has passed away at the age of 91, this 1st of November, as well as his public service as a deputy, as a senator, as a minister of universities and research in Italy, and as a member of the European Parliament, he will be remembered for his contribution as one of the founders of European Schoolnet to the transformation of Europe's education. This year, the theme of our conference, as Santi mentioned, is empowering schools with digital skills and reflects and contributes to the aims of the 2023 European Year of Skills. In particular, UN has been working for a long time now on how the different European countries are preparing their education systems to reduce the digital gap through initiatives and projects that invest in students, digital skills, and schools' capacities, and empower educators, equipping them with the right skills to bring real change. On 23rd of November, the European Council adopted a set of recommendations on the key enabling factors for successful digital education and training, and on improving the provision of digital skills and competencies in education and training. With this package, the Council is addressing the need to make education fit for genuine digital transformation and allow it to keep pace with the times while providing the necessary skills and competencies that are and will be necessary in the realities of today's world. The COVID-19 pandemic highlighted the need to improve the digital readiness of our education and training systems in terms of resilience, accessibility, high quality, and inclusiveness. In the context of the 2023 European Year of Skills, it's more relevant than ever when it comes to digital transformation, to focus on the needs of education and training, taking action at all levels, pre-primary, primary, primary, secondary, vocational education and training, higher education and adult learning, within a lifelong learning perspective and addressing all groups of the population, young people, adults, and professionals. I'm sure Georgi Dimitrov will share with you in greater detail what the Commission is elaborating in this context, and I will not go further on this very important dimension. Through its various activities and networks, European Schoolnet plays a constructive role actively supporting the Commission in the implementation of the European Digital Education Action Plan and assisting the Ministry members in their effort to achieve the targets set in the Action Plan. More particularly, 
we can mention the permanent activities developed at the UN, such as the European Schoolnet Academy, the Future Classroom Lab training course program, and the various EC-funded activities, such as Better Internet for Kids, the EU Code Week initiative, the Digital Skills and Job Platform, and the Agile Edu project, among other projects, they all contribute significantly to the development of digital skills amongst our school teachers and students. On last 23rd November, we organized for the Commission the Safer Internet Forum. And the theme this year was empowering youth with skills for the digital decade. More than 150 participants joined the event in person with an additional 700 registering to participate online jointly. Amongst others, this event aimed to allow participants to keep informed on emerging trends and issues, especially as they relate to the, to the rights of all children and young people to be protected, empowered, and respected in the digital environment. The objective was also to be aware of the skills needed for young people to thrive in this increasingly digital world. During our two-day event, we will have the opportunity to delve into these digital skills challenges. Let me mention very quickly some key components of our program. Today, we are pleased to welcome Divina Frau Megs with a keynote address on preparing students for a tech-driven world. Our first round table on rethinking digital skills for schools will allow representatives of our ministries of education to exchange their views on this topic. We'll also have a policy exchange on how to support and sustain change at school level, where we learn about the digital education transition plan implemented in one of our member countries, Portugal. Subsequent parallel breakout sessions will address specific digital skills activities, such as media literacy, computational thinking, and the continued professional development of teachers. On our second day, the second keynote speaker from UNESCO, Mark West, will share with us their strategy regarding the importance of developing digital skills for all. We will then have our second round table on teachers' education and training in the age of artificial intelligence. And I refer to some discussion we had yesterday at our steering committee meeting with our ministries, asking uh, what type of activities European School Net is doing in artificial intelligence in education. And that's part of the, of the concern we have for continuing uh, nurturing the debate on this important aspect. And before the closing words, we will, we, we will also hear the students' voice on digital citizenship in the classroom. We really hope that these various debates will contribute to stimulating the digital skills agenda all over Europe. You should also know that during our eminent event, European School Net will take the opportunities to promote some of, of, of its activities, and, and more particularly, we will take the opportunity to promote a new perspective paper that you will have on your USB stick on digital well-being. The thematic seminar we will organize very soon under the auspice of a European School Net Academy on teachers' professional development in the age of artificial intelligence, and three major projects that of European School Net featuring the eminent program, the EU Code Week, the Continue Up project, and the Media Literacy Case for Educators project. I commend all of these to you. Finally, I'd like to take the opportunity of this opening speech to also thank our team at European School Net, and more particularly, all colleagues behind the organization of this event, and to thank them very warmly for, his, for their outstanding collaboration in the organization of this event. I wish all of you two very successful days in Rome. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> European School Net and the Ministry of Education in Italy. Uh, you may know, or some of you may know, that UN was launched officially in 98. Uh, so it was last century. And you may know that it was an initiative of very few countries. It was the Scandinavian countries, 
uh, Sweden was very active in Denmark and Norwegian. There were France, but one of the most active country in promoting European Schoolnet, and it was actually Berlinguer there, but then was the minister, was actually Italy, in such a way that they had a, a partnership at the ministry and Indira, and of course Indira is co-organizing this very event. So they all put together the efforts to make sure that there was, first of all, there was an office in Brussels, and there was somebody, by the way, in Brussels from, from Italy, and, uh, you know, the first office was five people, and, and one of the five people was, was Italian. So, um, Italy, and not because I'm Italian, but Italy has been very, always very Europhile, and I think we've been keeping this attitude of being Europhile for many years. I mean, we are one of the uh, founding members, as you know, of, European, uh, of Europe. And uh, so I think it's important to keep in mind that uh, the, the Ministry of Education in Italy has been promoting and keeps promoting uh, European Schoolnet, and in general, the, the, the ideal of Europe uh, since, since the decades. So that's the reason why I would like to, to call on stage the representative of the Ministry of Education. So Serena Lippi, who is a diplomatic advisor for the Italian Minister of Education. Please, a few words of welcome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for the presentation and good morning everybody to the representative of, of the education uh, ministries, uh, the, European, the European School Net, uh, the European Commission. It is a really a great pleasure for me to take part in this annual conference, uh, Eminent 2023, on behalf of the Italian Minister of Education and Merit, Professor Giuseppe Valditara, to exchange our views on the crucial role uh, of digital technologies in improving education and enriching human capacities. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers, particularly the executive director of European Schoolnet, Mark Durando, the president of INDIRE, Cristina Agrieco, and also Georgiev Dimitrov from the European Commission for this invitation, and, but also for their important work developed in the last years to protect and enhance the role of education. In this effort, emerging digital technologies could offer interesting opportunities to improve the efficacy of our education systems. We all live in a global knowledge-based economy, and a high number of students who leave a school before achieving a qualification or who are lacking adequate competencies in our major, is our major concern. But we, ask, uh, we are, must also tackle the lack of motivation and the fact that many students often refer to monotony as the main reason for their abandonment. The degree of creativity and interaction offered by emerging technologies can surely make a difference in solving these problems. Responding to this challenge is a part of the strategic vision of the base of the policy action of the Italian Minister of Education and Merit. Focus on the pillar, personalization of learning, and the development of the talents of each student. According to this vision in Italy, we have launched a strategy which is mainly based on two key actions. First of all, the first one is the introduction of innovative laboratories to integrate emerging technologies in the curricula. And the second one is the implementation of teacher training courses on digital tools, including artificial intelligence, which are available on our digital platform, Scuola Futura. Through the new plan for digital school, we are proceeding with a greater dissemination of innovation in daily practice, with the use of active and experiential teaching, such as laboratory activities, that could better address the need of personalization of education, and that produce greater involvement of students, especially girls, towards STEM disciplines. We are setting up innovative learning environments in all schools that encourage new ways of collaborative interaction and the development of new transversal competencies. Through our national recovery and resilience plan, we are also investing in teachers' training on the pedagogical approaches 
that best use digital technologies, including tools based on generative artificial intelligence that can be of great help to improve teaching. The training is aimed at acquisition of competencies to allow teachers not to passively undergo innovations, but to manage them and control digital tools, understanding not only their potential, but also the limits and ethical risks of the misuse of technology. Thanks to innovative laboratories, teachers can provide their students with study materials tailored to their needs and interests and involve them in collaborative activities and creative projects. In this way, it is possible to personalize learning and evaluate strengths and weaknesses of each student. The implementation of more than 160 teachers' training pathways funded through our National Plan for Resilience and Recovery is perfectly in line with the common European framework framework of reference and follows three main strands. The use of emerging technologies to support teaching and learning, the methodology to teach and learn the functioning of artificial intelligence, and the, the preparation of students to live in a world increasingly permeated by technologies, but in an ethical and critical way. To conclude, I strongly welcome the fact that both the experts of the Ministry of Education and the Commission, the representative of the main digital technologies companies, are involved today in this debate. We strongly believe that governments, communities, businesses must unite their efforts in a broad alliance in order to foster innovation and the new development model with education at its center. I thank you all for the attention and I wish you an interesting and productive discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Serena. Indeed, the Italian ministry is really doing a lot. Um, I, by experience, uh, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm in charge of eTwinning, and eTwinning is one of the initiatives which has been trying to do what Serena just mentioned. But that cannot be done with the, with the push of ministries, with the policy, so that uh, you know, there is a recognition, there is a, an engagement, and there is also an embedding of such policies and initiatives into, into the, the national uh, initiatives. Um, now, we had European School Net, and then we have the ministry, and in a way, indeed, it was associated with it. But there, was, there is another stakeholder which is extremely important in the development of European School Net, but not only. Uh, sometimes we take for granted that the European Commission is there, and I think we shouldn't. In a way, uh, the European Commission has been pushing and uh, making policies, and actually putting also quite some, some money into, into these policies, to make sure that Europe would become what we call it, or we used to call it, a knowledge society. And uh, now we take it for granted. I mean, Europe is there, is like, they should be doing this, is something which sometimes I go back and step back and reflect and say, well, if the commission wasn't there, would we be able to do all the things we are doing? And I'm not talking about all the initiatives I've been uh, dealing with, but in general, all the changes in the research area, in the education area that are actually happening in, um, in Europe. If you think of other continents, uh, well, it's not really happening the same way. So that's the reason why I think it's important to keep as one of the actors in this uh, conference the European Commission in mind, and is now represented by, by Georgi Dimitrov, who is uh, the head of Digital Education Unit and DG Education and Culture in Brussels. So the stage is yours. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm very glad that you that you pointed that fact out, and I'm, I'm actually very honored to be here uh, in Rome, um, uh, in this magnificent city, and it's an honor to represent the Commission in this event. First of all, thank you very much to, to, to you, Mark, uh, to President of Indira and Ms. Lippi, uh, all of you that uh, deserve to be recognized and for which I don't have the time to do so. Um, thank you very much for this invitation. Um, you said it, 2023 is the European Year of Skills. Digital skills, I would say, are the skills of the year 2023. 
Um, they are so because they are the ones most in demand. They are the ones that are mostly needed. And I would probably say the ones which are probably most neglected. And um, I'm therefore very grateful that you have put this topic on the agenda and that you uh, are going to have this open conversation here today. Now, I would not go into listing what the European Commission has done, is doing, and will do to promote the uh, digital skills. Um, instead, I have decided to focus on three messages today, and I will try to weave a little bit in the European perspective uh, that you have um, highlighted uh, with, of course, what matters most here in the field of education and training, which is what is happening on the ground, in the schools, in the member states, by the stakeholders who are actually doing the work. Because um, with all our ambition, um, at the end of the day, we need to recognize that um, the work is happening also where the pupils are and the students are. They are sometimes coming to Brussels, yes, uh, but um, most of the job is done elsewhere. So, <clears throat> my very first message to you is that um, I have been working in this domain now for quite some time, digital. So, my, my first message to you is that the digital transformation uh, of the society shows is a, in a very clear manner, if you just take a long um, enough kind of look at it, how comparable the problems and the challenges of the European member states are. And the more time goes by, you mentioned European Schoolnet has been created 25 years ago already now. Um, I mean, time goes by. The more time goes by, um, the more you see that the problems we're trying to solve are very similar and often they're actually identical. And this in itself is an opportunity, but actually it is a real necessity to work better at the European level because the issues that we're dealing with in 27 member states and maybe at some point more will not be 27 different kinds of problems. They will be very, very similar. So it is very, very important to um, work better together and to um, increase the level of cooperation. And what I mean by this is I would like to give you one example. Last year, the European Commission organized what we call a structured dialogue with the member states on digital education and skills. So what we did is we organized 27 bilaterals with the 27 member states. We spent five, six hours with each of them going through different topics uh, from skills to infrastructure um, in education to labor market needs. And we arrived at this sort of shared diagnosis with the involvement of a uh, large number of ministries of course, the Ministry of Education, but not only, because digital transformation in education is something which cannot be solved only by the education ministry. This is a very, very important point for us. So in this process of the shared diagnosis, we saw a lot of uh, common problems. Uh, a lot of the digital skills gap are, are uh, not unique. Um, they're not unique even in Europe. Um, and uh, teacher training or the development of, uh, let's say, access, all of these um, requires also a lot of different initiatives which are also happening to be shared by the member states. So many of them are similar. And what is in fact happening is that there is sometimes a bit like, you know, everyone is doing their own thing. And when you recognize this, you, you start to see that actually it makes sense to do this better together. And I refer to the two council recommendations that you have mentioned, uh, Mark, uh, because I will not now list what the council has decided because in fact it won't be appropriate for me to do so because the commission has made a proposal but it is the council who has decided upon it. But what I will say is that the council has recognized that uh, it pays to work much more closely together on digital education and, skill, and skills at the European level. Um, they have adopted these two council recommendations they reflect the two priorities of the Digital Education Action Plan directly because it's about the ecosystem or the enabling factors and the skills and competences. These are the long-term priorities. They are not going to change next year because they are just so important. And um, I am not going to also list, let's say, the different measures, but what I will say is that the fact that the Council has followed the Commission proposal to a very large extent speaks about this recognition of the shared um, awareness of the problems that we are facing. And it means even more. It means that the member states will now even more become part of the solution rather than this kind of conversation that we have sometimes in Brussels. I'm sorry to, to become a little bit now uh, kind of EU-focused. 
uh, where we have the, com the, the discussion, oh, but this is a matter for the member states, so it's not for the EU, the, the question of subsidiarity. Whereas I believe that we should all sort of try to address the problems um, and the reality is that digital education and the problems around digital skills are a hybrid kind of problem. They cannot be solved, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, by just looking at the, the national practice because there is so much more that we can learn. My second message is that uh, when it comes to digital skills in particular, and I very much welcome the topic you've put on this agenda today, is that it is mainly through education and training that um, we can have a most impact on the development of digital skills. And I know this sounds like completely obvious, but if you look at the type of challenges we have, 54% of basic digital skills, target is 80. 9 million ICT specialists, target is 20 million. Um, one out of three 15 year olds basically um, do not have sufficient digital skills according to ICUS. So if you have this kind of uh, data points and, and um, evidence, and none of this is breaking news, this has been there for quite some time, <laughs> in fact, which is, uh, uh, which is why the relative weight of digital skills and competences in, in, in formal education training is really not satisfactory. I mean, the, the, it, it, it needs to go further up. Um, I think we need to look at this in comparison to what has been done in uh, literacy, in numeracy. Education and training systems have done a magnificent job in bringing the population to a stage where everyone can read, write, and um, create. Um, well, we need uh, uh, probably to think about the digital skills acquisition in a similar way. And uh, because the problems that we are having are just very, very massive. And I, I know that Divinia will, will speak also about the disinformation. So uh, there are a lot of things that we can solve through, through um, uh, let's say, more effective provision of digital skills. In the recommendations themselves, the, 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 um, I want to maybe give two examples. One is that um, uh, I'm very glad that the member states recognized how important early childhood education and care is in providing children and parents with appropriate guidance, favoring the use of age-appropriate tools, unplugged digital education activities, play-based learning methods. And what I want to stress is also that this is not about uh, putting children in front of screens. In fact, it's completely the opposite. It is making sense of what we have around the um, um, environment and um, supporting uh, learners, but also carers in the purposeful use of the technology in education. But we need to recognize that children do use technology from a very early age on. This is what the evidence says. And another example, just to, to, to maybe um, be mindful of the time, is that we, I believe, should uh, look very carefully at what we have been very good at in the European history of education, which is the scientifically based method of education. And um, we should be looking at this and asking ourselves, but why is it that digital skills acquisition and competences is perhaps not as advanced as we would like it to be? And maybe there is an issue here in terms of why, how we do it and the question of the scientific method, for example, as it is uh, possible to apply it through the uh, science of informatics, computational thinking or computer science, whatever term you want to use. Many member states are, have already recognized it. There is some um, very specific references in the council recommendations to the need to address informatics as a separate uh, discipline. And um, also what is particularly for me extremely important and I feel really very passionate about it, to make it much more attractive. Uh, because if you look at the ICT graduates and look at the, uh, the share of women when they fall out from the, from the um, informatics tracks, you immediately recognize that also the method we teach this is um, sometimes very, very, uh, well, how should I say, Out, outdated. I should, probably I should be more careful, but um, so we are going to support the development of uh, informatics education also with guidelines next year. This is a mandate from the council. Uh, I want to, to quote here a computer scientist, uh, Seymour, uh, Seymour pa a paper who said something which I, I find very nice. So he said many years ago that informatics has a low floor, a high ceiling, and very wide walls. Low floor, which allows everyone to get started. High ceiling for those that want to fly high, and wide walls in order to do it differently if you wish so. 
My final message, and I, I come back to something which you mentioned in, in your moderation, is that the digital part of education is not only here to stay, but it, in fact it is going to just increase as, as time goes by. And this is uh, something we would ignore only at our own risk. I'm, I'm finishing on this point because I feel that this community is extremely important to drive this discussion forward, and I recognize what you have been doing over the 25 years or so of, of, of existence. I'm mentioning this because I see some worrying trends on the horizon in terms of uh, let's say, banning devices completely out of the school, just removing everything um, uh, just like this. And I, I sometimes feel like maybe there are some other problems behind this, like social media and addiction and these type of things, which are not necessarily linked to the question of how you purposefully use technology in education. Um, I also see some uh, certain digital fatigue, if you like, uh, which uh, uh, some reports and so on, which is, uh, kind of zero in on the negative, admittedly, consequences of COVID, but then extrapolating this into the future and saying, well, this is the impact of technology and education. Well, I will say that um, there is a great deal we should learn from how technology is applied in education. We should, however, take a very nuanced look at it, and we should not throw the baby with the bathwater. This is very important. Um, so. Just think about one year ago with ChatGPT. I mean, um, I'm sure that most of you have tried it out. Imagine five years from now, do you think there would be less digital in education? So, to conclude it with, uh, first, we have a responsibility, in fact, not only opportunity to work together on developing education and digital skill for the digital age. Second is that we need to empower, and I, I like this word, we need to empower the institutions to develop digital skills because it is essentially them who can close the digital gap. Uh, all the other efforts are great, private sector, NGO, civil society, but it is education and training which is at the core and hopefully make this digital gap obsolete. Um, and then finally, we should really think long term. There will be up and downs in this type of um, development, but as long as we are driven by our core values, the digital transformation will remain an opportunity for Europe and for progress. Thank you very much for your attention, and I wish you a very, very productive conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Georgi. Subscribe every single word. Thank you so much. So, um, are we in time? Uh, I think actually we are just in time, and it's perfect. We are so in time that we can afford to have a little game. No, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, uh, Eminent is, is not only a conference, it's is a networking. As I mentioned before, what I remember is not what we talked about, but I remember the people. So we need to break the ice. So let's break the ice. So you need to turn. You, you probably know the person next to you, because you, that's normal. But you don't know that the person which is behind you. In some cases you do, but in most cases you don't. So I would like you to do very simply for three minutes, very simply one thing. Introduce yourself and share what are your expectations from Eminent. Three minutes. So you can just turn, and the ones you cannot turn because there's nobody down there, they will find a way to make sure that you're not equally spread. But I'm you know, let, let's put some non-digital analytical and analogical skills together. So from now, three minutes, turn, find something you don't know, introduce yourself, say, so what do you expect from this? Thank you, from now. <laughs>